I never quite made it to the 10th floor. When I was at Lutheran General Hospital, I had a very nice office on the fifth floor. And it had windows on three sides, and it was a nice, spacious place to have an office, but I never quite made it to the 10th floor. You see, on the 10th floor is where all the executive leaders were. All the people who were at the very top of the organization were actually at the very top of the building. And I never quite made it to the 10th floor. You see, on the 10th floor is very removed from the rest of the hospital. To get to the place where the patients were, where all of the action took place at that hospital, if you were on the 10th floor, you had to go all the way down to the first floor, then you had to walk down three long hallways, then you had to get into another elevator and go up to where the patients were. The 10th floor was fairly well removed from where the patients were and where the nurses were that took care of the patients. The biblical model of leadership couldn't be different. Jesus describes himself not as abiding on a 10th floor, but as actually in a pasture with sheep. He describes himself as a shepherd who spends all of his time with those that he must care for. Listen with me to the biblical model of leadership described in John's gospel in John chapter 10, starting with the first verse. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. In the biblical world, we are described as sheep. I must confess, I've never been that fond of that designation, sheep. It's not exactly the animal I would have choosed to be had I been given the choice. If you could be any animal in the animal kingdom, what would you choose? Would you be a horse, sleek and fast, or or maybe an eagle soaring over the clouds, or... Perhaps a dog with a loving owner or a cat that can lounge around all day. Or maybe a mighty lion who's king of the jungle. All of these animals 
seem much more preferable to me than a sheep. You know, sheep are not very smart. In fact, that's an understatement. They don't have a clue. They'll wander off anywhere. If they don't have someone to lead them and guide them, they'll wander right off a cliff. Without a shepherd, a sheep would never survive. They have to be led to pastures, they have to be led to water, and they have to be watched constantly. That's us. We are the sheep of his pasture. And what about the shepherd? Well, the shepherd probably looks something like a homeless person of our day and time. Because the shepherd was outside all day long, all night long. Probably didn't get very much sleep because he had to be up much of the night watching the sheep. Weather beaten, leaning on his staff because he has to stand up all the time. That's the shepherd. That's how our gospel writer describes Jesus. It's a very different model than the leadership model that I learned in the corporate world, where the leader was on the 10th floor and everyone else was on the other floors. This is not the way scripture describes leadership at all. In fact, the shepherd who leads us is described as having two qualities. One is that he is fearless, and the other that he is loving. When I was working in the corporate world, being fearless and standing behind the little people was not something that I was taught to do. In fact, it was looked upon with suspicion. Anyone who would lay down their life for a person on the floors, like a nurse, was questioned. It just wasn't what you did. You told people what to do, and you made sure that they did it and that they did it right. And if there were any mistakes, You went to them and said, why did this happen? That's what leaders did. They didn't lay down their life for the people that they were supervising or managing. That was considered weak, and it also was not even heard of most of the time. But in our story today, we see that that is exactly what Jesus does as our shepherd Did you notice that all the sheep have to be in the fold? And the shepherd has to protect those sheep. The shepherd has something called a staff. A staff was the only weapon that the shepherd had to protect the sheep. And it was a long stick that had a big round piece of wood at the end with usually nails in it. And if a wolf came along or if a person came along that maybe wanted to steal the sheep, That's the only weapon that Shepherd had. That's all all he could do to protect those sheep. And then you notice in your picture, in your bulletin, that in front of the sheepfold is something called the gate. All the sheep had to go in through the gate at night. And the shepherd actually lay down across the gate. He lay down there because he did not want anybody to get in, like a wolf or a person that might steal the sheep, and he did not want any sheep to get out. So when we hear in Scripture that Jesus says he lays down his life for the sheep, that's literal. He lays himself down at the sheep gate to make sure all the sheep are safe. Can you imagine how wonderful that is? In the scripture we heard today and in the Psalms, our safety that we enjoy because Jesus is our shepherd is a safety that allows us to go in and to come out free of worry. That's what we get because we have a shepherd like Jesus. But we get something much more. We get his compassionate love as well. In the days of Jesus in Palestine, a shepherd would have sheep for many years because sheep were not used for food. They were used for wool. So a shepherd would know everything about his sheep. If a sheep had a marking on it, 
the shepherd would know about it. If the sheep ever had something else on their body that shouldn't be there, the shepherd would know about it because the shepherd knew each sheep and even gave them names because they were with him for such a long time. And when a shepherd called a name of a sheep, that sheep would respond to that shepherd, not to anyone else, just to that one shepherd. That's the kind of love that Jesus the Good Shepherd gives us. And then at night, when the fold is being closed up and the darkness comes in, the shepherd takes something called a rod, which was a long stick, and he would lay it across the gate fairly low so that the sheep couldn't get in right away. They would have to stop. And then the shepherd could take a really good look at the sheep and make sure that nothing had happened to them during the day. He examined each sheep before they came in to the fold for the night. A few weeks ago, I had to take my dog, Rusty, into the vet. And when I was chatting with her, she told me that she has taken care of sheep. She actually took care of sheep as a child. So I asked her what that was like. And she told me that sheep are the most stoic animals she's ever cared for. They will not show you that they are in distress unless they are dead. They will die before they will let you know that they are sick or they are injured. Sheep do not share that they have a problem. That means the shepherd has to be watching very carefully for anything that might be different about the sheep. And that's what Jesus does for us because he loves us so much. He is the gate. He is the one who protects us every night. He is the one who calls to us by name. Jesus leads us. He doesn't tell us where to go or what to do. He steps right out in front of us and walks ahead to make sure that that path is clear and we are safe to go forward. He does that for us every single day. And then at night, when we lay down in darkness, he protects us by lying down at the gate and making sure that no one and no thing will get in to harm us. That is the safety and the love that we enjoy because Jesus is not just our leader. Jesus is our shepherd. We are the sheep of his pasture.